the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Juliet. Welcome to our your next podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. <laughs> well, happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I am a native Louisianian. So, um, and I write paranormal and now contemporary romance. Mm-hmm. Um, my earlier works, I started publishing in 2014, uh, were a little bit on the darker, edgier side, you know, and um, around 2018, I had this idea that I really wanted to write something fun and light and but still set in Louisiana. And to be more relationship focused and light on the paranormal and um, the stay spell series was born out of that and that's what I'm that's still like my main um, staple right now my main series, although I am publishing some contemporary now as well, and that's me. <laughs> so we're going to chat the stay spell series in a few so let's chat about your contemporary you're about your contemporary because that's like a brand new you know, yeah, because you gotta build a world that's not witches and werewolves and. Yeah. It's like less world building, maybe something else. Um, what was what led you to write some contemporary? Like what what you know? Yeah, what led so actually it was um I'm on a podcast with my niece called Smart Women Read Romance, and um we do all genres, and it was really Jessen recommending so many different contemporaries, and I was like, man, I love this, you know. I was like I think I would like to try this. I'd like to try writing this, you know, but it's funny because it terrifies me because. I can't fall back on like the paranormal, <laughs> like there's no vampire jumping out for the third act conflict, you know, like that can't happen. <laughs> and um, it has to be in place in like the real world. And I know that sounds so silly, but that to me is scarier than writing paranormal mm-hmm. um, and, and more difficult to be quite honest with you. Um, it's harder to write something that comes across believable. I feel like there's almost different rules when you're writing paranormal versus you can get a little bit a little bit crazy, you know, in the paranormal with your characters and have them do crazy stuff. But you have to be a little bit more careful in the contemporary world Um, because people have expectations, you know. And so, so yeah, so that happened. And, uh, and so I started writing Jed and Lola's book. And then a friend said, hey, you should submit to Smarty Pants Romance. And I was like, you know what? I would love to do that because I love Penny Reed. I love the Green Valley world. And, um, and so I did. And so then Jed and Lola moved from Louisiana to Green Valley, Tennessee. <laughs> and, and I joined that team and they're a phenomenal group of authors. Penny Reed is amazing to work with. Um, it has been just a wonderful writing experience for me, probably the best collaborative experience I've had as an author um, for sure. And now I'm writing my own. I'm, I, as a matter of fact, my first contemporary in my own series which is a little Cajun town in Louisiana basically where I live comes out next month so <laughs> I bet Jensen is really happy about this because I did watch her video vlog about yeah. reading Louisiana books and how they did not live up to Cajun <laughs> right <laughs> look Jessen is so excited because I told her I said Jess I'm gonna have a glossary at the beginning so they'll know how to pronounce the Cajun name she's like yes <laughs> like that's amazing and all the Cajun words <laughs> Oh so, my gosh. So yeah. tell us a little pitch for it. What's what's all about? Okay. Um, Enemies to Lovers, and it's set in Beauville, which is the, uh, the series title. Um, it's called Bright Like Wildfire. And it is um basically these two these two people who she's a teacher and he's actually um opening a new business, uh like a kind of a bougie supermarket, <laughs> local supermarket. Oh. Um, and um it is about it's really surrounding community theater. That's sort of like the central focus because she hates him because he's basically like perfect. He's Mr. He's Mr. Perfect in the town and you know, nothing can go wrong for him. He's always the male lead in all the shows cause he's perfect. And, um, and, but once upon a time when they were in a teen youth um, play when they were younger and this is sort of set up in the first couple of chapters, um, he was swinging a glitter bomb and it hit her in the boobs and oh. exploded on stage in front of a live audience. <laughs> and she was embarrassed because she was 15, you know, at the time, you know, and he was a stupid teenager. And she's been basically holding this grudge against him all this time. And um, 
so at the beginning of the book, it's she's kind of reminiscing about that incident and she gets the lead for the new show and he is the male lead. And so they are romantic leads in Barefoot in the Park in this theater. And so then, you know, fake kissing and all of that has to take place. <laughs> and, you know, of course they fall in love. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that you're taking community theater, which you're part of, because I remember yeah. when you were coming to coming to our book club last year, a yeah. couple of years ago, you were like, I have a theater, you know. So we were at the cast party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I did it at my friend Charlie's house in the back of the cast party. It's so funny. I, I remember that too. Yeah. So I love that you're incorporating different parts of your life, yeah. you know, and yeah. to, you know, make it meet you, make it work. Yeah. Know? Look, Beauville is probably going to be the closest to my real life, mm -hmm. you know, than anything. As a matter of fact, there's like a part in the book and I want to put an author's note that this actually happened. Like there was a pig loose in town and everybody was Facebook, like taking pictures of it and posting it. Like he's here, he's here. He moved over here because like, they were trying to track him and find him. And I was like, yeah. I'm totally using that. <laughs> that is going to happen. <laughs> so it does. There's a pig loose in town. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, crazy stuff happens in small towns. It really does. And, and it's just, it's fun to write about, I think, living in a Cajun town that's more realistic, you know, mm -hmm. than what, you know, I hate to say that, not that people outside can't write about Louisiana, but it's a very different culture. It's a very specific kind of culture. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun for me to, you know, share that with other, with readers. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> okay. So switching gears, we got to talk about Stay Spell series. And so yes. Tell us the other pitch of the series and then what to expect, you know, for the Ooh. top. Then okay. Elevator pitch. Okay. It is, um, it is, I'm sorry, I was trying to condense these, but it's about six sisters, the Savoy sisters. They're all witches and um, about them finding their true loves. Each, each book is about a different sister. Um, I just published uh, book four, which is always practice safe hex about Livy and a grim reaper, Gareth. Um, each one of the lead heroes is a different kind of supernatural. I have two vampires, two werewolves, and two grim reapers as the heroes <laughs> for the sisters. Um, one of my readers got on to me, why isn't anyone marrying a warlock? I'm like, I don't know. I just like this. <laughs> I like this mixed supernatural mixture. Um, but it's set in New Orleans in the sort of bohemian-esque side of New Orleans where it's the lower garden district along Magazine Street. It feels very Parisian. Um, you know, uh, it's kind of, it feels like it's, New Orleans almost feels like, uh, not as big as New York, obviously, but they have different neighborhoods, you know, and they have a different vibe. And uh, the lower garden district definitely has that bohemian vibe. And I just thought it would be so cool you know, to set like a paranormal series there. Cause there are, there are psychic shops and tattoo shops and all these like cool little, you know, things down there and great restaurants and all of that cafes. And so uh, I decided for this series, I really want it to be more focused on the couples, on the romance itself. And so obviously it's paranormal. Um, and I make that a, very, a part of each one, but it's not the driving force, which would probably be the case in my other Book series you know the romance is the driving force in each of these books and um yeah and I've just fallen in love with them honestly I was talking to another friend the other day she said are you gonna be sad when you write I'm like are you kidding me I'm gonna cry like a baby like when I finish book six it's gonna be it's gonna break me <laughs> yeah your series is great for beginners like paranormal mm -hmm. for beginners like you know those yeah. who skip twilight like myself do mm -hmm. not want you know like our afraid of going to this big world building big, big <laughs> right uh, rules and stuff like this is just a good beginners like guy yeah. like just dive into it the romance is yeah. the forefront there's banter there's comedy there's like yeah. funny things <laughs> that happen you know, yeah. like, it's a it's more of a rom-com feeling and like a true rom-com right so, um, and that was me trying rom-com this was my first attempt and I was like, okay, I think I can now write a contemporary. <laughs> but I was like, I think I'm doing okay. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go for it. But you're so right. I've had a number of readers um, who've like, or reviewers even have posted, you know, if you're never written, read Paranormal before, this is a good gateway book. Try this, you know, whatever. Um, 
So I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. I would love to get more readers into paranormal. You know, it's a great genre. <laughs> it is. It is. Mm-hmm. someone who's like diving into it. I'm like, this is not that bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not scary. It's not heavy. Very, like I said, it's very light on the paranormal. And like, I really just wanted to use the magic and all of that to be the fun part, you know, fun parts yeah. of the story. You know, yeah, it's kind of like, I love witches and it's because I grew up around witches, like real witches yeah. like, in Puerto Rico. So, so it's like, I'm like, I'm loving just like spells and stuff like that. Cause like my mom's like, Oh, let's turn the spell. Like, you know, you got to aura. Definitely. Yeah. I still, oh, yeah. like, if she still does it, she's like, oh, we that's need awesome. To aura. We need to like get all this stuff. That's right. We've got to clear your chakras and all that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because, look I have a good friend who is a psychic and she's a light worker and so she loves this series and I actually ask her a lot of things like I'm a hey what would like in like for a real witch like what would a real witch so I try to like blend a little bit of the real witch world to um yeah. you know my imagination and just ma- you know magic bringing that into play yeah so I just love it I was like I was like just feels like back home <laughs> yay I love that that is awesome to hear <laughs> awesome. so do you have any books to recommend our listeners to pick up uh books to read so uh most recently uh oh my gosh it's a long title Kate C. Wells new series the tyrant alpha's rejected mate was <laughs> very good book two came out and I enjoyed it but book one was just like oh so good um I also love historical romance Elisa Braden is one of my favorites she has the um I think it's the Rake of Ruin series I recently read um anyone anyone but a gentleman I think it's anyone but a gentleman and the devil is a Marquess and of course anything by Lisa Kleypas oh my goodness I reread Mary Winterborn just to feel good this summer oh that book those are so good yeah I, it's funny because I love historical romance but and I always wondered I'm like why do I love that when I write paranormal but I think it's because historical feels like an escape to mm-hmm. to a different world you know and um I just love that so yeah that's kind of what I've been reading lately <laughs> and let's do a plug for your podcast tell us all about your podcast and yes so that- my niece Jessen and I do smart women read romance and we only review books that we love so um you know, and we also do mini sews. We're about to start a new mini sewed series on tropes. Our first trope is going to be grumpy sunshine, like our favorite grumpy sunshine books. So, um, but yeah, and it's fun. It's really just us talking about the books, what we loved about it. We kind of go through the, each book, you know, so it's spoilery. <laughs> so if you want to read the book, you want to read the book first before you come. Um, but we enjoy it. It's fun. It's really just us chatting about books that we have for like over 10 years together. She's been my first romance buddy and my longtime romance book buddy long before I was writing. So yeah, it's fun. It's a fun little, you know, it's a fun little thing we do on the side and enjoy. (laughs) I love this. And how do you pick your books? Is it Jessen picking your books? I know she reads a lot. <laughs> Jessen reads way more than me. So it's usually Jessen. Every now and then it's me. Like um, I'm right. very proud that I was the one who recommended JT Geisinger's Queen and Monster series. <laughs> I was like, I think that's, that's a great series. <laughs> I read the first one and I was like, Jessen, I don't care what you say. It's going on the podcast right now. You find a spot for it, you know? But she'll, um, and she'll often say, hey, I was thinking about these books. What do you, which ones do you want? And like oh I have read that one let's do that one but uh, she'll often put books on there I have not read yet um but we have such similar taste and she knows what I like and what I don't like like my big like no I'm not gonna go there I don't want that um so we stick to she sticks to things and I always like them. like everything she puts on there I'm like oh god that was so good thank you <laughs> thank you for recommending it <laughs> yes I love your Rob like your podcast does like really good reviews of like things that you are likely to like you know yeah it was not like yeah. you know like okay I'm definitely, definitely gonna hate this book and I'm just gonna hear some rant about yeah. it I like something like positive I'm like okay they like <laughs> this book it's like a recommended book that I'm like okay I'm more likely to buy it you know right well and the thing is and it's like we had decided that early on I was like look neither one of us like to just bash books you know mm-hmm. but and it's like but also why I don't want to spend neither one of us wants to spend an hour talking about why we hated a book like you know and and that's just mean yeah <laughs> you know I'm an author I'm a little sensitive to author's feelings you know 
Yeah. Um, but she does have her own YouTube channel where like she'll read books and be like, oh, this one wasn't a winner for me. But she's always very fair when she talks about stuff, as you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely fair. And like, honestly, the things I, I trust Jessen 